When you started to ask that question, I thought you were going somewhere else with it. Have you ever signed an odd part of someone's body? And yes, I did. Brad, let me ask you a question. Uh, <laughs> What's the strangest signature you've ever placed? Um, <laughs> way too close to a woman's chest because I hit her in that spot with the ball. Not on purpose, of course. It was in Hartford. H-E-A-R-T, Hartford? You hit her in the heart? Uh, pr- pretty much, yes. Her, her husband was adamant. <laughs> like, please, she wants to be signed here. And I'm like, are you both sure? Uh, there's a sheriff nearby. <laughs> No? Okay. <laughs> so I signed her shirt very, very close to where I shouldn't have. Uh, but but she was adamant she wanted because she got hit with the golf ball right there on the 15th hole. And this was on the 17th tee. They caught up or followed our group for a couple holes and uh, made that request. So you got to give the people what they want, right? <laughs> I guess. That's service. Hi, this is Steven Anderson from Cincinnati, Ohio, and I play at Cedar Trace Golf Club. This is Golf Smarter number 925. Wearing the wrong size glove is as bad as wearing wrong size shoes. With Carrie and Brad from Red Rooster Golf. This is Golf Smarter. Sharing stories, tips, and insights from great golf minds to help you lower your score and raise your golf IQ. Here's your host, Fred Green. Welcome back to the Golf Smarter Podcast, Brad. Thank you, Fred. It's uh, It's been a while. I can't remember the last time we spoke. I feel like it's been at least... Eight to ten months, probably. But uh, wow. I appreciate That's you. Because you guys have been yeah, busy. Appreciate you reaching back out. Yeah, of course. And it's great to have your your partner in in business here and your caddy, <laughs> Carrie Mar. <laughs> Carrie, great to have you back on the podcast as well. Thanks, Fred. Yeah, great to see you. Um, congratulations! You guys have had a heck of a year with RedRoosterGolf.com, and you're kind of like you don't know this. But you're kind of like a good drug, or is that a bad drug? Because the addiction is there. <laughs> I've learned it's like, you know, it's really, um, I never realized how much I needed to change my gloves on a regular basis until I started having a subscription to Red Rooster Golf. And so now I'm addicted to it, and it's like, oh, I've got a little bit you know, a little bit of wear here on this glove. Time to get rid of it, as opposed to it getting all sweaty and crinkly and drying up and standing up in the back of the car all by itself. (laughs) So congratulations on a great product and a great service. Yeah, thanks, Fred. I mean, I I mean, I think you're touching on the subscription. I think that's kind of how, uh, how we envisioned it. And, you know, most of our customers buy gloves as as needed. And I think that's kind of, I think that's all of our intention. We all sort of believe that we'll make the right choice at the right time and make the right plans. But, you know, the subscriptions there just in, for those of us that um, maybe can't be trusted to, you know, change the gloves often enough and that way you can sort of put it on autopilot and you can adjust it as needed, you know, monthly, bi-monthly, quarterly, get as many as you need when you need them. And when they show up, it is often just kind of that reminder, you know, is it time to change this out? Uh, There's nothing like, you know, that feeling of a fresh glove, you know, to start around for sure. Yeah. But didn't, what wasn't the the original concept for your business model, a subscription service? And then what, what helped you decide that it was like you needed to make some, some moves here to say, you know, let's, let's sell gloves to people who need them when they need them. No, it was, it was always to be flexible. We, okay. there wasn't, you know, we're the first subscription glove service, but we knew that that would just be, that would cater to a certain audience mm-hmm. that we still believe it, you know, that, that probably is the best way to, you know, use red rooster gloves is to figure out, you know, how many gloves do you need? When do you need them? And then use the subscription service because you can make these adjustments as needed um, but we always wanted people to have an option to buy a glove. You can buy them in bulk. You can, you know, buy them on the regular. You know, a, a lot of our customers are set up through, we use a Shopify store. If you've set up through Shop Pay, it's as easy as a subscription service, right? To come to the site again and order another glove is a couple clicks. So it, it, it is pretty simple. 
But um, no, the, the main vision was that some people really need the subscription because I think, like I touched on, everyone intends to get gloves as needed, but often by the time you need one, you're having to run into a pro shop, maybe limited options, maybe they don't have your size, usually pay a little bit too much. Um, so it's just a, a way to kind of plan and, and more, um, a lot of golfers don't know when to change a glove. So it, it becomes that little nudge and reminder when a new glove pops in the mail. It's not that you have to use it right away, but often it, it, it's, a uh, you know, causes you to question like, you know, what am I doing with this current glove? Do I need to squeeze a couple more rounds out of it? You know, or is it, uh, you know, beyond its useful life and, um, is it time to, to switch things up? And Brad can speak to kind of how often it was built off the idea that like, you know, pros change their gloves out really often, but also most golf gloves are made for pros and then amateurs use them and squeeze more rounds out of them than they're really built for. <laughs> it's probably true. Brad, how often do the pros change gloves? I mean, like, do they go multiple gloves in a round? Uh, it depends on the conditions, probably in the, the hot, oh. sweaty humidity of uh, the John Deere Classic in, in Iowa. Absolutely, you're going through a couple of gloves around. You'll have a couple on the hook on your bag, you know, drying out. But, you know, every golfer has a certain spot where they get the sweat marks in the humidity, I think. Mine, mine typically just goes on the top of the wrist and it starts to creep up towards the Velcro. And uh, it's super important to... To, to make sure that you don't have a glove that's sweaty, which means then it'll start to dry out oddly and it gets crusty. Right. So right. Um, failing that, I think, I think a, a typical PGA tour player would probably play two competitive rounds with a glove. Um, you know, not that I signed a ton of autographs when I played, but I did. And a lot <laughs> of the times a kid would ask for the glove and I'm like, absolutely. I'll sign the glove. I'll give it to him. Um, it, it's, it's probably a little more memorable than a golf ball. Sure. Um, a lot of times they'd ask for your hat. I had kids in the kids in Mexico and, and Panama city, Panama and Colombia would always ask for your shoes and your sunglasses. I'm like, man, I've got a limit. I, I, I can't give away everything. I got to play tomorrow. Right. I can give you a glove. That's no problem. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I, I think the typical. Why, why the, that region? Why do you do say, you know, the kids in, in this region here, they, they're a little more aggressive in what they're asking They're, they're not shy to ask. That's absolutely true. Can I have true. your Hanes, please? Well, <laughs> can you sign you're getting something you don't want to get if you're asking for my Hanes, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> I, That's I, a mistake. I, I, yeah. I don't, Talk about sweaty gloves. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know exactly why it is, uh, but they weren't shy to ask. But, um, you know, you got to draw the line somewhere. So I'm like, hey, guys, golf balls, gloves, no problem. Anything else, you know, at the end of the round – uh, on Sunday, absolutely. You can have my hat. Um, it's really sweaty, but you can have my hat. No problem, but not, you know, Thursday or Friday, but, um, yeah, a typical player would go through, uh, a glove every two rounds. I think that's, that's pretty common. Um, like Carrie said, you slip a glove on, on the first tee, you know, they announce your name, ready to hit your first tee shot. It feels awesome. I don't think anyone can deny that part. Um, it's just a matter of cost, right? For the average, average golfer, the consumer, can't afford that. So that's why we make gloves that last a long time. And it, yeah. you know, you pointed out in our pre-show, like, Hey, your gloves last too long. Like you're in the glove business. You want to sell gloves. But <laughs> I think in our view, it's hard to reinvent a golf glove, right? So you might as well be known for something. And I think that we've really done a good job of delivering really good feel but something that the consumer can say, oh, it doesn't last three or four rounds. It lasts eight to 10 to 12 before I even think that I might need to change it. So I think we've delivered on that and given something unique to the, uh, to the recreational golfer. I think so too. I, um, <laughs> I, I can probably go, I, I guess around a dozen rounds before I start thinking about it. But it's also like, oh, but I got a new one in the mail. Do I want to do I? Oh, no, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> uh, I'm just now I want to go back to a second. 
about giving autographs. Did you ever, some kid come up to you saying, hey, can I have your autograph? Or did you did you ever say to them, what's my name? <laughs> Tell me uh, who I am. Tell me who do you think you are getting an autograph from? Do you know who I am? No, despite the rhetoric that you might hear uh, these days with, with kind of the the rank and file of the tour. Um, it, it, in my view, it was okay to not to know who I am. I think the biggest thing for a kid when they're at a PGA tour event is that the player that he's current, he or she is currently in front of is a PGA tour player, like full stop. There's no, I don't need to know his name, you know, Rory and tiger and all those guys, but you know, a guy in the field is still in the field. And I think the kids were, that was their, their mind, right? That, that was where they were coming from. Um, I will say when you when you started to ask that question, I thought you were going somewhere else with it. Have you ever signed an odd part of someone's uh, body? And yes, I did. Uh, Brad, <laughs> let me ask you a question. What's the strangest signature you've ever placed? <laughs> um, <laughs> way too close to a woman's chest because I hit her in that spot with the ball, not on purpose, of course. It was in Hartford. You know that drivable par four in Hartford? It's got the water on the left. H-E-A-R-T, Hartford? You hit her in the heart? Uh, pr pretty much, yes. Her, her husband was adamant. Like, please. Hail four? She wants, <laughs> she wants to be signed here. And I'm like, are you both sure? Like, nobody's taken <laughs> video anywhere. I'm being punked. Uh, there's a sheriff nearby. <laughs> No? Okay. Um, so I signed her shirt very, very close to where I shouldn't have. Uh, but but she was adamant she wanted because she got hit with the golf ball right there on the 15th hole. And this was on the 17th tee. They caught up or followed our group for a couple holes and uh, made that request. So you got to give the wow. people what they want, right? <laughs> I um, guess. That's yeah, service. Yeah, <laughs> that is, yeah that's, um, that's a good one. That's... <laughs> I really don't want to go any deeper than that. Let's just take a time out. We'll be back right after this. Before we start our next segment, I want to thank both of you because you've been incredibly supportive of Golf Smarter. Um, and you have allowed us to uh, make our Golf Smarter ambassador program where we have listeners introduce each episode, tell us where they're from and, and where they play. And one of the gifts that, we, that we've been regularly giving away, I have to honestly say the second most popular gift behind the Tony Manzoni video is the Red Rooster Golf Glove. And I really appreciate you guys uh, allowing us to give those away on a regular basis. So thank you very much for supporting us. And yeah, it's great. It, the ambassadors are always excited. Um, so we follow up with them and try and figure out their you know, glove hand and size, and we send them the glove compartment as well. So they have a spot to, to keep the gloves and rotate them. And, um, and, you know, Brad was talking about this in the pre-show. We see a lot of, um, repeat customers. They, you know, the glove makes an impression it, it's, it's quality. And then they have a spot to, to house their gloves and to rotate them, you know, during the round. So it's been, it's been great for us. We appreciate the, the shout out and it's nice to work with the ambassadors. They obviously appreciate it. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's talk about sizing for a minute. Now that you brought that up, um, what have you found out? What have you discovered that the consumer isn't aware of when they're sizing themselves for gloves? We've, we've done a number of, we probably did 15 to 20 events this year where we, we would be set up on typically a par three brought in to do like a glove giveaway. And mm. I would say I'm going to estimate, you know, I don't know, 60, 70% of the time the golfers leave with a different size, a size they, um, they've never either never tried before or weren't aware of. And I'd say typically it's the cadet sizes. It's just, um, so there's regular size. That's, that's for, for a, I'm, I'm a regular, that's a, it's a symmetrical hand. It's sort of like call it the normal size. Um, you know, those come in, you know, left and right hand, um, you know, up to from small up to double XL. Um, and then, then there's cadet sizes, which is a slightly shorter finger and a slightly wider palm. And that, that kind that kind of hand, I can kind of see it when they're coming up and it's just a different, 
kind of hand. And so those gloves fit in a different way. They need typically that that's for someone who normally says, Hey, you know, the, with a regular glove, I have a little bit of extra, uh, leather on top of my fingers and, or I find the gloves to be really tight through the palm and cadet sizes is meant to kind of fit that particular kind of hand. And I'd say a lot of people just aren't aware of that size option. It's huh. not a particularly great name. Right. Like cadet people think it's a kid's glove. Yeah. So, so they just stay away from it and they, you know, are, so when we're there doing these fittings, I can often see that hand or I see them try a regular glove and I see that it's long in the fingers or I see that it feels too tight and I can give them a, a cadet glove. And I would say that that's my experience. I'll lean on Brad. He, he's done a lot of these events too, but it's usually it's, it's, it's moving them into a cadet size or exposing them to that. And then quite often they've got a glove that's at least a size too big, sometimes two. They just, um, a glove, you know, A, it comes in a wide range of sizes. Like our gloves come in up to 34 sizes, including women's and youth. Whoa! So, you know, most people are pretty happy with a run of the, you know, a large, but they've never tried a medium large or they've never tried a medium large cadet. And that's what I am. I'm a cadet medium large. Okay. And I never understood why. I always thought I had big hands. Uh, and, um, and then golf and I'm wearing a cadet. I'm like, wait, it's a kid size. Isn't it? It's like, I never understood <laughs> yeah. what it meant and why I have that size that works for me. And maybe it doesn't work for me. I don't know. I just, that's the one I have. It feels the most snug hmm. and doesn't have that little extra piece of fabric at the tip of my fingers. Yeah, yeah that, that's huge. Uh, the, it should be really, really tight. Like yeah. almost, I would say most people aren't willing to wear a glove that fits properly because it fits so tight. Oh, and they oh, often feel like, oh, this is too tight. And I'm often like, that's perfect. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> if, it, if it slides on really easily, it's too big. You should have to pull that glove on, on at least, especially that first time. And most people want to slide one on easily go it fits relatively well and what happens is you know it's soft leather it stretches and two three rounds in it's sloppy and now you'll see that the telltale is when someone has to pull the glove strap it should when it fits i'll show you we all know that's fit here yeah this is my this is the sussex so this is and for those of club. you who are listening as an audio podcast Brad's putting on a glove. <laughs> if you couldn't tell the sound of Velcro. So there okay. you can see that like, actually the, the Velcro should only go roughly three quarters of the way across. The That's flap the on the top should not cover the full piece of Velcro on the wrist. It should only cover about three quarters of it. That's what yeah. you're saying. And you can see how that fits you know, nice and tight. And, yeah. and most people say, Oh, this is a little tight. Let me go, you know, let me go up one size and now we'll often have to sort of talk them into to this because where you'll see that a glove doesn't fit is if you ever see someone who's got it pulled way over like that, the that means that that, that glove was probably, you know, it's too big. It, um, it's, too it's, big. it's already stretched out. It never comes back. Right. So that, that's kind of my take, Brad, you've done, uh, you know, as many or more of these events, what are your kind of takeaways on the fittings? Yeah. I think first and foremost, it's the, the misunderstanding or the, not having knowledge of what cadet means. Uh, like Fred said, he thought it was a kid size at first. I think that's what most people end up thinking. Um, so when you first come to our website, we have this live chat function. And I'd say half of the uh, new customers who are using that function will say, what's the difference between regular and cadet? So we explain that. That's fairly easy to explain. It's another for the person to actually know if, if they, you know, because like you said, Fred, you thought you had a really big hand. Well, cadet medium large is kind of in the middle of, you know, we go small, medium, medium, large, large XL. So you're kind of right in the middle, average hand size, right? Um, I think the most obvious hand, and Carrie alluded to it, is when the guy who probably lays bricks for a living comes up to the tee box and you can see it. It's the construction hand, you know, real thick palm shorter, wider fingers. You, you can tell. We we sometimes refer to it Callous as, the, like as the tradesman's <laughs> hand, right? You know, it right. does it for a living. 
his hands take a beating and they've kind of and, been and formed. And we call those journeymen. Right? <laughs> In that case, I'd wear a cadet size, but, um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think first and foremost, it's the, the difference between regular and cadet can be fairly stark. And then mm. as Carrie said, again, a lot of just men, 40 year old men come up to the tee and say, yep, I'm a large. And I'll look at the hand and I'll say, yeah, let's try a medium large. And then that might be too big. And I, I think Kerry can um, speak to this. I think he had, uh, I don't know if it was a TV appearance, Kerry, or a podcast where you fit the guy and he's worn a, a large his whole life. And I think you got him into a medium, which is two sizes he, down. He, he, he was a medium. He, yeah, he was a medium. He played for 15 years. He was adamant that, you know, that's what he was. And, and as soon as I met him and shook his hand, it was a cadet hand. I, I just, <laughs> and, uh, so we moved him down, we, but he, we tried, we, we, he, he tried, uh, he put on a medium large. It was huge. He put on the medium, like, this is what you're wearing. It was still big, long in the fingers and, um, and it was tight in the palm. And that's why he was stuck on that size because it was tight through the palm area and he needed the cadet and then he needed to go down. So he, he ended up, we fit him on a, he was a cadet small. Wow. So he moved down a size and into cadet. And I'd say more often than not, that's where those fittings go. They're, they're fun for us because most people haven't tried the, the range of sizes. And a lot of golfers, even you know somebody who's a, a really good golfer, he's been playing golf for 15 years, and he's always had a glove that doesn't quite fit. And when he got that proper fit, he was kind of blown away. He's like, this is a really different feel. Um, wow. and, and it... You know, now you can really feel that club in your hands. Um, you know, get, golf's a game of confidence and having a glove that fits you really well. If, if, if for a long time you've been wearing a glove that just doesn't quite fit and feel great, um, that's not, you know, that's not a great way to, to start around. So those little adjustments, those, those go a long way. And we do see that a lot too with our, you know, free shipping, free exchanges, um, we do a lot of coaching, you know, back and forth by email, live chat, when people get, you know, say their first gloves and they need, if they don't fit, you know, we, we coach them through what that adjustment should be. And, um, that's, that's a lot of fun for us too. Cause once they find that fit and they find the, the right glove for them, and especially with us, we got this wide range of, of different styles, um, then they're, it's a, it's a big change for them because I'd say, you know, lots of golfers have never probably been properly fit for a golf glove. Um, so that's, that's been kind of a rewarding interaction for us. I think the the second thing that I noticed from, from these glove fittings is that, uh, people are always, uh, willing to share like, Hey, I blow out the palm of this glove all the time. It happens all the time. It lasts a couple rounds and then the palm blows out. And, and part of that is, the glove fit, like Kerry said, a bigger glove will get sloppy. And all of a sudden when you're swinging the club at hundred miles an hour, give or take, uh, that handles moving fast. Right. And it, the grip is rubber. Sometimes it's cord and it's taking a toll on the leather on the glove. And one of the other things that we notice is that a lot of people hold the club, especially drivers, uh, too far up the grip. If you don't see any part of your grip coming out of your, if you're right-handed, if you don't see any part of the grip coming out of your left hand, then that butt of the grip is going to kill the palm of your glove. If it's stuck kind of, if it's not going quite past, um, for better or worse, your wrist, then it's going to be massacring the palm of your glove. And that's a, a good friend of, of both Carrie and I's. He's a, he's a huge supporter of ours. His name's Scott. Um, he's about a 15 handicap or no, he's 12 handicap up in Toronto, Canada. And the first thing he ever said to me when we started a glove company was I blow through gloves like crazy. And we played a couple months later and I said, well, the butt of your grip is in your palm. That's why. So he choked. I mean, it, to him, it's choking up, right? He feels like he's choking right. up. He's not choking up. He's just using more of the grip and putting it in the proper spot. And all of a sudden, his gloves last fifteen to twenty rounds now. So it, yeah. it's, it's and he shouldn't. He shouldn't be getting longer shafts. Uh, <laughs> correct. Your handicap will go up. 
<laughs> well, you know, because one of the things with Scott is a very tall guy, six foot. He's a big five tall or six. guy. Yeah. Oh. So he yeah. did need longer clubs. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. He was extending his club, right? He, his driver was basically too short for him. So he was going oh, farther up the grip and all of a sudden it was in his palm and going through gloves like crazy. So that's, that's another adjustment that, that, uh, you know, you don't like to give people too many, you know, golf tips in the middle of a round, but at these glove fittings, you can say, Hey, if you blow through gloves, this is a good reason why. Well, and you're, you're at a, at an event, at a fitting, it's not during the round. So you can suggest that. That's <laughs> exactly okay. right. Yeah. You know, like for me, my life, my business, I hear voices. And I'm like, Oh, I have a sense of what region you're from in the world. Like, you know, Carrie, you give it away all the time. You're Canadian. Right. But yeah. did you ever think you'd be in a business where you say, shake someone's hand and you're like, Oh, Nice hands. Okay. Oh, you're a medium, a cadet medium large, are you? Yes. It's like, wait a minute, what are you doing? <laughs> no, I never did. But um, yeah, no, it is a bit of a sickness now. Like when I'm shaking hands, I am like, I'm evaluating Analyzing like your, your glove size. I'm, I'm like, is he, he's a regular? He, yeah. He's a regular. He's probably a medium large. Uh, and, and there's no support groups for that. Either. Not yet. Hi, my name I mean, is Carrie, and I like to hold hands. Yeah, my, right, my wife take... may, may need to start one. <laughs> All right, we're going to take another break. We'll be right back. So let's talk about your year. Um, it's been a, just over a year since we last spoke to you two. Um, and you're still in business. I love it. I love that you're still in business. And we did bump into each other at the PGA show last January. You guys were scoping it out, just walking around, talking to people and stuff. Let's talk about what 2023 was for you and what's going to be happening in 2024. How exciting. Yeah, I I mean, it was amazing. Yeah, it was fun to to catch up at the PGA show. That was my first. and uh, That's mine. Mine too. Are are you going to head back? Not this year. Okay. Um, I, it, it worked out for me last year because, again, it's cross country. It's not an inexpensive trip. I'm a podcaster. Um, and uh, I was in Florida for a family wedding. So I'm like, I'm just going to stick around and do the PGA show. Oh, it was great. a blast. Um, yeah. But it's it was not what I thought it was going to be, although I probably need a couple more shows to really get to figure out what it is. But that was for me. Talk about you. Yeah, no, it. I mean, it's a it's a bit of an overwhelming experience, but yes, it's good. We, we're trying to you know strike up some partnerships and get a sense of of just even the you know the industry. I even liked a lot of the different breakout sessions. There was a lot of good sort of industry knowledge. You know, like where what are the trends? Where are things headed? You know, how's mm-hmm. the um, did you learn anything in any of those um, sessions or people that you met that you walked away going, we need to make a change in our bit. We need to make a, an adjustment here uh, moving forward because of what we just learned. Was there any of that? My, my biggest takeaway was how many simulator companies were there. Yeah. And, and, and there was a really great breakout. It was put on by national golf foundation. It showed the, you know, it was the, they call it the green grass golf versus the off course. And, you know, between the top golf and these indoor simulators, how that was really growing and how that segment looked like there was a a great opportunity there. And we had developed this, this glove. That's been our, it's been our second most popular glove out here. It's our range rooster and it was built for practice. It was built for this purpose of like, Hey, save these beautiful leather gloves for the golf course, when you're going to the driving range or when you're practicing, um, use this. It's a, it's made of a stretchy synthetic material, super durable. You can even wash this glove. So it, wow. so it's good for months. Some guys, you know, get a well, whole season one of, out of which it. Which one yeah. is the range rooster? <laughs> yeah, it's I called need the to range. get one of those from my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and so, but this has also been, you know, this is a, a simulator glove because it's sort of the same thing. When you play simulator golf, you you can play 18 holes in an hour and you're, you know, the cadence, there's no walking between shots and so on. You know, you hit one, you hit another. It, it's all, it's a much more like a range session slash practice session where it's just, it's a lot of repetition. 
um, hand gets hot, you're not taking that glove off and on. So you need something that's a bit more durable. So that was, I think, a, a, a key insight for us that, that um, you know, to really position this glove is, yes, it's, it's meant for practice. It is meant to kind of like okay. save the soft leather gloves, but it's great for that purpose of like, you will go into a simulator session, you will put a glove on and you're not probably going to take it off for the next hour. And so you need a glove that's going to be able to like handle that much, you know, that many, you know, hits, but also like your hands going to heat up. Um, so this glove is really great at like pulling the moisture out. It's this kind of mm. like, feels like a stretchy suede, um, super durable. And, um, and you so, develop that after the PGA show? No, we, we had you're, it. You're just, we, you had it. You just realized, but we realized better, like, Hey, it's, you know, better use for it, it. This, this is probably, it's, it's probably built better for, simulator golf than it is even for the driving range i'd say probably mm. simulators becoming the driving range in a lot of cases um and, and in other cases it, it's become the it is golf for a lot of people they just right. uh you can time box it you can play if you can play 18 holes in 12 in in an hour or it's a lot more time box than you know uh the commitment of an 18 hole round or even nine holes um, well also for what you and i talked about um off mic was that I play golf 12 months a year because of where I live and you can't. Right. There's right. people who only get to play five months a year. Sure. Uh, yeah. So, so there's that, a lot that of was probably the biggest takeaway there was just that whole well, similar thing and, and building some products for it. Um, I think the other one was just that we've always wanted to have this for our subscribers and for our, you know, if you like our gloves, we want to be able to have a suite of gloves. So everything from a, a practice glove to your tournament glove, which was the the Sussex glove that I showed you, it is our thinnest, softest glove. So mostly our gloves are built to be super durable. This is the glove that, you know, is the exception to that rule. It's built for feel and it's meant for those special rounds. We've got our rain gloves. Um, got oh. The, the, Saved the my rain. life yesterday. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm like, I'm just not even going to take them off. I have left and right rain gloves. Yeah. And I'm just not going to take it off. And I'm like, I'm sinking putts now too. Wait a minute. What's going on here? <laughs> you know, uh, first hour and a half of our round yesterday rained and then it was a beautiful day, but it was like, I'm just going to go right to my red, black, red rooster gloves. That's it, the, the rain. rain rooster. Oh, uh, man. Fred, those have been great because everybody needs a set of rain gloves. Like you're you're gonna you're gonna have uh, days where it rains, and so you need you know gloves for that. So you so you're prepared. We've been super happy with that glove, uh, and then we just um, we just rolled out our um, you know our sort of cart mitt slash um, oh you know a, a winter mitt. This is you know really nice. Uh, fleece inside you can even put like a, a hot pocket in here on a <gasps> super cold day smart uh, they're waterproof and what's um, the name of the that one the- i believe that we call these the lobster claws <laughs> what was the final name <laughs> that was my suggestion uh <laughs> but we we ju- just released these this week uh so we built great. those with a, a, a great partner and yeah, we wanted to build that. That was another one where we looked at and said, you know, you could make a winter glove, a glove that is warmer, slightly thicker, and you could wear it in, you know, those really cold days, maybe in the 30s and 40s. But we just felt like um, you still want to play with feel. And the yeah. best thing to do is keep your hands warm, you know, with these cart mitts. And when you get to your shot, take these off, use a proper glove with good feel, hit your shot and move on versus a, a warmer, thicker glove that you can barely feel the club in. Maybe yeah. your hands are warm, but it's, it's tough to score and, and actually play. So Yeah, thank you for that clarification, because I'm thinking, how do you swing a glove yeah, with no. that thing on? Hey, no. Fred, <laughs> let, me, uh, let me ask you a question about our rain gloves. Uh, did you have... Oh, I'm sorry, Brad. I'm, a, I'm the one who asked the question. <laughs> Carrie, so... <laughs> <laughs> nice try. Okay, go ahead. I lost my train of thought for a second. No, um, <laughs> so I'm good at that. <laughs> did you have any experience with rain gloves before you tried ours? And what's your experience when they get wet? Were you trying to protect them? Uh, because I know how the idea that we built them with was, you know, you got to try to keep them dry. Like you don't have to make 
you know, the crazy effort to do so, but they do, they work better somewhat dry. Like you're not sticking them in the cooler like you would with other companies that say, Hey, get these soaking wet and they perform amazing. Um, but I, I'd be interested in your feedback because we've had, you know, people go to Scotland and say, these are the best things ever. Uh, I did have a guy that went to Bandon a couple weeks ago and he said, well, they got super, super wet and they weren't the best thing that I've ever tried. So I was like, we need to figure out, and, and I think we know the answer already, but we need to figure out kind of how to position these as what's the best way that they work and to talk through it with customers like you is probably the best way to do it. Oh, interesting. Um, so I didn't take them off. Like I said, I even putt with them. Um, and then, and the rain was about an hour and a half. Uh, I never had an issue with, uh, the club slipping. Um, I, you know, I hate when, when, uh, the grips on clubs get wet. So I, I don't even like laying my putter down on the ground, right. uh, on the hand, on the on the grip, so I'll take the head cover and you know use that as a stand or my divot tool and use it as a stand so the glove the grips don't get onto the ground and get moist at all. Um, and so again, uh, the grip was never compromised. But after let's see, we were on the eighth hole, seventh or eighth hole, I finally decided I'm going to pull the glove off. Um, just to give my hand a break because my hand was wet, which I was really surprised how moist my hand was. And yet I didn't feel like the, the glove was being compromised as far as losing its grip. So I aired them out for, you know, in between holes as I was walking and then put them back on um, and, and kept them on until I think the 11th or 12th hole. Okay. Um, so, so that makes, that makes a lot of sense. I don't sense. know if I answered your no, question. No, you, you totally did. So they're not, they're not waterproof. They're not meant to be, to keep your hands dry. They're meant to perform, you know, on your golf shots. So we're not protecting your body. We're trying to help you play better, better golf. Right. So, yeah, and had a good round. so yeah, um, I, I think just hearing that solidifies what we need maybe need to do a little bit better job of in our messaging for the rain rooster is, which is these aren't meant to keep your hands dry. They're, they're meant to. It was to- kind of the compromise at the end. So we, we did like five iterations of these yeah. and wow. there was lots of different materials. So we, in the end, we put this, this nylon between the fingers and it allows for like a little bit of breathability, but it was also, it was mostly a feel thing. We wanted the gloves to really like, and we wanted to have this really thin palm. So it's a very thin palm. So it has yep. really good contact. It's got these silicone roosters for grip. Um, but it's a very thin glove. And because of this, this, we were able to seal this up. When we sealed it up, the glove was kind of bomb proof. So nothing got in. But we also found like hands got really, really hot. And mm. nothing also got, kind of got out. And the glove felt like hotter and warmer and thicker. And it was... So that was the compromise we ended up making is we were like, okay, it's not sealed. So because of that, some water can actually get in it. I do kind of take mine on and off even while I play. Um, I love the feel, but it's, you know, if we could make two versions, there probably would be the like secure waterproof one. But that one's really for those days where it's like, it's battle golf, right? And you're, uh, when it's raining that hard, um, it's, Go uh, home. it's, it's a struggle anyway. Um, and, uh, yeah, I feel this like one's more for that, like round where it's, it's going to be raining and you still need to be able to like have a glove that, um, holds up and still like performs for you, um, versus the like torrential downpour. Yeah. I feel like if you're playing in the rain and it's going to compromise the way you play, that means you probably have to play like you're, you're playing for a reason. You're playing for score. It's a tournament. It's a member guest, whatever it is. Um, you can't go home. So in that case, we wanted to make something for performance and not, you know, 100%. Well, I just want to stay dry. Well, if you really want to stay dry, you're probably going home. Right. If it's that bad, uh, like you said, Fred. So I, I think, I think the, I don't want to call it a compromise. I want to call it, we're we're making gloves for people to help them play their best and so with the with the rain rooster and like carrie said it took forever to or what felt like forever to 
to come up with the the ideal rain glove because I've played rain gloves that are frankly not great and the feel is compromised and and it was hard to play well. Mm. So I think if mm. again you want to be known for something, right? And in this case it's like I'm taking these to Bandon, to Ireland, to Scotland and using them because I want to play well on my golf trip. I don't want to just have the experience of being there. I want to play well. And so that that was kind of Well, Brad, how many guys on tour would wear rain gloves? Um you know, the, tournament round. the guy that I think of right away is Mickelson. He was never shy to break out both gloves, right? Left and right. right. I tried it right. for once for one hole in a, in a Q school, actually. And I made a double bogey on the easiest par four you'll ever, you'll ever see. And I just thought, this is the I worst feel. I, I can't. It's not working. I've never had a glove on my right hand before. And I never want to have a glove on my right hand ever again. <laughs> so, so um, I'm an exclusive. Then it became a mental thing. Yeah, then it was well, in yeah. your head. Yeah. No and doubt. And that's going to kill you, right? Yeah. So um, left hand only for, for me for rain gloves. And it's just feel is so important, even more so in the rain. Because like you said, Fred can't stand the wet grips. Can't stand. Like I just, it drives me nuts as well. So that was that was kind of our thought process with it. And it came out really really well they're so popular we think that's awesome. yeah it's a, been a home run yeah no and i just love i well mine are black with the red little roosters on it and i i got that just after i returned from my trip to japan in 2022 and it was like perfect it looks japanese i love it <laughs> all right we're gonna take another time out and when we come back we will get to 2024 and talk about what's happened in red rooster golf in the coming 12 months we'll be back after this this week on Golf Smarter Mulligans is a fascinating conversation with Mike Peterson, who trained to compete for the Olympics decathlon, but turned his focus toward the biomechanics of the golf swing. Now, many of us experience some pain after a round of golf, but here, Mike helps us to isolate and identify exactly where it's coming from. I want you to really get inside your body, and as you're swinging and hitting a ball, there might be a sensation, there might be a pinching feeling, there might be a tight feeling, or there might be pain at certain points. You can start narrowing down what's causing that pain in your golf swing, even without having a teaching pro. Think of your body for a second. So when you hit that ball, are you experiencing pain at impact? If it's at impact, is it a wrist? Is it a knee, a hip, lower back? And then from there, take a look at the position your body's at. You know, kind of slow down a little bit and say, wow, you know, my hips, they seem all kind of jammed up. And then, boy, that back hurts right there on that lower right side. Well, your hips aren't clearing. Your hips aren't rotating. But I would say if you're getting back into the swing of things, you truly have to go to the range at least one time and just casually, leisurely hit some balls just to kind of see what you got, see how your body responds to it. And then typically the next day, you'll know from a conditioning standpoint if you got something wrong. Originally published in May of 2012 as Golf Smarter for Members Only, episode 334, this is the first time that we've ever shared it publicly, so you don't want to miss it this time. That's episode 241 of Golf Smarter Mulligans with Mike Peterson talking about how to hit longer drives and hit the ball more efficiently, all while being pain-free when playing golf. So if you like the variety of topics and guests that we provide here at Golf Smarter, then don't miss the chance to get insights, advice, and the gamut of conversations around golf twice each week with Golf Smarter and Golf Smarter Mulligans. They're both available for free from wherever you're listening right now. Brad, as we're having this conversation, we're getting a chance to look at each other. Um, you wear a wedding ring, a uh, wedding band on your left hand. I do. Do you wear it when you play golf? Not a chance. I've actually lost, this is a very expensive $3 rubber ring because I've lost two um, fairly expensive wedding bands and I wasn't going down the road of a third one. Um, but even the rubber one, I can't wear when I play golf. Um, the last time I tried wasn't, wasn't too long ago. It was about six to eight months ago. And on my home course, I was five over after four holes. And I thought, that's not your game. That's not my game. So I, I put it away. 
And the funny part is I haven't lost the rubber one ever. Uh, <laughs> and you won't. Frustratingly. <laughs> It'll always <laughs> find its way back. To I, had a good, I had a good system. Uh, I lost the first one at Sea Island uh, on the PGA Tour, unfortunately. I had a good system where, you know, you have your, your credentials and you have the, the lanyard on. And I take the lanyard off and I put the ring. Uh-oh. So the, the lanyard went in between it. I'd wrap it around uh, the credential, put it in my bag. Can't lose it. And somewhere from locker room to first tee, it disappeared and oh. lost the other one on my home club about a year and a half later. And uh, that was that. It was, uh, it was a sign. It was, it was a sign to go. You know, I think my wife bought these four, four for $12 on Amazon. And <laughs> just the symbolic nature of it, right? That's it. The, I lost my wedding ring on a golf trip. I, it was like, I know, I wait. I know when I took it off, I never found it again. And we had our wedding rings custom made. Luckily, I found the woman who had made them, who had moved to South Carolina, and she made me a duplicate. So I, I now I rarely wear it. Uh, well, I never wear it if I'm playing. And I have systems of, all right, I'm going to put it here. But try to remember before you leave the house, put it in the drawer and just leave it there. So, so anyway, last week. My wife lost her wedding ring oh, no. <laughs> and had nothing to do with golf. And since then, I've taken mine off and I haven't put it back on. She, but don't tell her. <laughs> my wife doesn't even let me have my wedding band. She's like, you can't be trusted with this. Ouch. Um, I would just, I would leave, I would have my wedding And you have band. four kids. And you can't be trusted with a wedding band. It, it's okay. a good, it's a smart move. I didn't fight her on it. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know how I haven't lost it, uh, but it would be in my, I remember time, it would be in my golf bag for like the entire summer. I would just take it out and put it in there and I would just oh, leave no. it. She's yeah. like, you're going to, somebody's going to take no. your bag. And yeah. No, so uh, idea. it Bad is idea. now in good under job. her purview and that's probably a, a safe spot. All right, let's get to 2024. <laughs> what do you guys got coming up? What's going to happen with Red? Because, you know, you've got, you've been growing since you started this company. It's really been impressive to watch and excited to hear what you got coming up next. Yeah, I think we're always coming up with the seasonal gloves. Those are always a hit. Um, anything new, fun, you know, fun colors and and styles. I think what we realized this past year is, mm that golfers really love to match their, their glove to their outfit. And, um, so we dabbled with, um, with a couple of different products and, and one of them that was a real home run for us was actually socks. Um, so we, we, we met this partner, um, at the PGA show and, um, we, we made a custom sock with them and we put it out, we've done, done a lot of collaboration with our, our audience. So when we're thinking of a new product, we do a lot of surveys. They tell us what they're looking for. Socks was one that was, was on the radar, like a good pair of, you know, ankle socks for golf. Um, and, uh, so we had looked at, it was, you know, a survey we asked, you know, were there any recommendations and it was sort of all over the place. There wasn't kind of like a, a sock company that, that jumped out just like with gloves. When we asked, you know, what's your favorite glove? It was all over the place. So, um, so we've, we made this, uh, made these ankle socks and, and honestly, I, I thought they were the best socks I've ever had. There was a real nice mix. It was, um, mostly sort of like a nylon. So they got a bit of stretch to them. They're super durable, really comfortable, um, great moisture wicking, all that. And, um, so we're going to dabble a little bit more in that. Just, uh, those, we, we did that collaboration. Those we, we, I think it was like three or 400 of them. They flew in a couple of weeks, just makes a nice compliment. They actually ship really well with our gloves so that it's, mm. um, it's a nice add on. Everybody can probably use a couple new pairs of socks every year. So, oh, it, yeah, absolutely. So that, that, that one's absolutely. been, um, that one's been a good one. I, and I think, how many sizes do you have? <laughs> well, then that's socks. the nice part is, uh, this come <laughs> in a universal make... size. So, uh, I oh, think wow. you can get one bigger, like an XL, but, uh, literally come in a, in an, a universal size. So I'm sure they're, yeah, they call it uh, they seven to 11, they call it. So yeah. pretty, okay. pretty broad sort of plays to the middle. Yeah. So it's simple, obviously like our gloves are pretty complicated. Mm-hmm. What, what we're trying to do there. And 
Um, you know, we, we spoke, we rounded out our, our suite of gloves. We've got our, you know, our practice glove. We've got our performance line with how they have a little bit more stretch through the knuckles um, and through the palm with our, our cape and silky gloves. And then we've got our wide range of, we call it our classic line. Those are, you know, 100% Cabretta leather, our super durable, great feel. Um, this past year we launched the Sussex. So that was our tournament glove. We were, we were lacking that. We didn't have that, you know, that thin soft glove. Um, you know, we've got the rain rooster. Uh, now we've got the, you know, the cart mitts, winter mitts. Um, and then I think, you know, we've, we've always had the, the glove compartment. This has been a, a hit, you know, um, Fred, with your audience, that's what they get with love. The- yeah, when we when we give to our golf smarter ambassadors, they get a glove and the glove storage compartment, which I think is so great. I love having it in my bag because it's not the only thing I keep in there, but it is you know gloves or sleeves. You know, like I have the kind of sleeves that I just pull up because I don't like wearing long sleeve shirts because I always get too hot. But if it's just a little too cool, I can just put those sleeves on. So I put that in my glove storage compartment. Nice. And I, and I also keep uh, one of those little pads that heat up, you know, if your feet get cold. You know what you could right. also put in the so glove smart. compartment so, is your wedding ring. <laughs> See? <laughs> yeah. It totally yeah, it zips up. Everything. Yeah. yeah. When I put it back on. Yeah. <laughs> if you can find it. Yeah. No, I know where it is. I know where it is. And then th- um, this is our, our this is sort of a complement to the to the uh, to the glove compartment. So that was one of those things when wait when, you held something up at our our listening audience. You said this, and they don't know what you're talking. Oh, sure. About. So th- this is Being, a we, we call this the words, cockpit. Carrie. It's a it's a glove wallet. We'll call it. Okay. Uh, so it's a it's a higher end version of of the the glove compartment. The glove compartment say that you know it's great because it's got the Velcro on both sides. You can rotate gloves during the round. You can hang it on your bag or you can put it in your bag. Um, so it's got, yep. this is more meant to be, um, you know, a spot to keep those gloves flat and dry between rounds. Um, so you can preserve them. Uh, it's also not, you can slide it into the side of your bag. You can keep it in your locker. Um, so it's just a, another version. It can be customized. So we're working with some partners. This is obviously heavy red rooster branding, but it could have, you know, a club's logo or it could be set up for a member guest, something that's a little bit more customized and, and it doesn't hang on your bag. That's the, the one. So some people love the glove compartment, but they don't want something on the outside of their bag. They've got maybe right. they've already got towel and, you know, range finder, et cetera. So this is a sort of answer to that. Great. Great. Um, and the branding is always there. And it's a it's a great logo. The branding is so right on and consistent. I love that. Also, head covers. Did you did I see head covers on your website? Yeah, we we have a mix of accessories. We've got uh, some hats and you know towels and head covers, and um, those have all sold really well. Just you know some nice branding. There's just you know um, we've done some collaborations with you know Stitch on a golf bag and with Precision Pro on a range finder. Um, it ne- never helps, you know, you know, ne- never hurts to get your, your brand out there. We love to see, you know, a head cover is usually the, you know, the best sort of visibility you can, you can get on a golf bag. So we've, uh, come up with some, some fun things there, but, you know, we'll have probably sold 50,000 golf gloves this past year. So it's, it, wow. golf gloves are what we do that that's, that's our bread and butter. That's our core. Um, you know, and, and we love our other accessories. Um, they're, they're great, but we you know, our, our main thing is to continue to focus on our, on our, you know, repeat customers, subscribers, and otherwise that, you know, that love our gloves. And, um, we want to be able to offer them any glove they'll need for, for any occasion, any weather, any, um, you know, a tournament round, a practice round, a golf simulator. So we feel really comfortable with the line of gloves, the suite of gloves. And, um, always coming up with, you know, some fun colors and styles, those, those types of things just seasonally to, to complement it. Um, but for when the you most say part, seasonally, you mean like depending on a tour, like a master's colors type sure. of thing, that kind of seasonal. Yeah, you're right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, listen, there's still plenty to talk about, about, um, in regards to your product line. So let's take one last break and we'll be back for our last segment.
Do you have any big brimmed hats? We're working on a, a bucket hat. Um, I, I have to say, and this is one of those soapboxes that I get on, but I really, <laughs> really wish the PGA would step up and stop promoting baseball caps because it's not healthy compared to a big brim hat. You're exposing the sides of your face. Usually if you put sunscreens on, if you put on sunscreen, you're just putting it on your face, but you're not covering your neck. You're not covering your ears. You're not covering the back of your neck. And big brims, big brim hats will do that. And I really think that the PGA should step up and say, we need to be a little more health conscious here. But that's my own soapbox. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm a redhead, so uh, I'm a big brim guy. I got the, yeah. the I got the solar sleeves, and because I don't like to to you know, I, I have to wear sunscreen, but um, but I, I like to, you know, protect myself. And uh, so yeah. we are working on, so we'll share some designs with you. We're having some fun with it. We, awesome. Um, I'd love to see it. But, um, but no, it's important too, right, to have, to have some options. And uh, it is a bit surprising that there's not more, you know, I mean, really just Joel Damon is about the only guy. And even that's exactly. a relative, that's not a wide brim hat. Um, it's, it's, it's more than a bucket, though. It is more than a bucket. Yeah. My own uh, my own personal experience with wide brim hats ended around when I was 13, 14 years old. Back then, it was the Greg Norman shark hat, right? Oh. Um, and all I found was that <laughs> cowboy on hat. my that cowboy hat. That's a bold move. On my uh, yeah, it looked really great in it, as you can imagine. But <laughs> everything I always found was that in my through swing, I would hit it uh, with the shaft of my club, and it would get you know, flicked off my head or whatever. And after about a week, I just thought to myself, this time for a it's, it's not, it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could see that. It just, that that's just what it was. I mean, honestly, Fred, you're talking to the two whitest guys you probably know and Carrie and I, so we are very familiar with the, uh, the sun and its effects. I, I wear a ton of sunscreen, always have had to. Good. And so, Good. um, but, but I, I hear what you're saying because, um, yeah, late, later in life, it, it's not super unexpected, right? You go to that uh, dermatologist and they're just saying, well, here, 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 and here, we're going to burn these off for you before they yeah, get anything. I, I made some vi- I made, I made a series of videos for a dermatology office and I had to interview all these people who had skin cancer. And it's like, you know, people who loved being out in the sun growing up and were never, you know, using sunscreen or never wearing big hats. And now it's like they have to. And it's like, it's just a simple preventative thing yeah. to do. So, yeah, yeah, turn my head. So, yeah, I just, I'm not a fan of the baseball cap because of it. Um, okay. And then the other thing going on with Red Rooster Golf is you guys do a podcast. We do. And and as we talked about on the pre-show, Fred, it's a lot harder than we thought it was going to be. Oh. Oh. Um, <laughs> so we had Welcome a... Welcome to my world, yeah, gentlemen. Exactly. Oh, boy. We, we had a vision of, of doing, what was it, Carrie, once every two weeks. And I, I'd say at least we were, we knew, we, I, w- I was like, you know, I think we can do every two weeks. Certainly like once a week was an impossibility. We were, at least we sort of figured that out. But f- from the very start, we were scrambling. Yeah. You know, it was wow. just, it felt like every two weeks we were like under the gun. Everything was coming down to the wire. And um, so we, we ended up you know, sort of taking the summer off. We were so busy and doing so many different things. We knew we just sort of couldn't keep up with it. And then we came back to it this fall with once a month. And we just feel like mm. that's what's reasonable for us. We, we really love the idea. We I actually really enjoy it. it. It is a lot of work, but I just love the long form nature of it. There's just a storytelling element. There isn't, um, there isn't a medium like it. And, and I love podcasts, you know, I love yours and, um, there, you know, there, there's just a few that, that I listen to on an ongoing basis. I find it relaxing. I love to walk and and put my, or even go, you know, this morning I went for a run and I I love to, to listen to a podcast when I exercise and do some different things. So I, I think it is a great medium and we wanted to have some sort of connection to our audience. And I, I think we've found that like that cadence of once a month it, it's feasible for us. It, it is a big undertaking. So we definitely appreciate what, what you're doing and how you're doing it. Yeah. There's here's the secret for me to be able to do it weekly. 
empty nest. Mm. There you go. <laughs> right? Just the wife okay. and I. If, if the kids were still around, it would be not possible to do this every week. On a, no way. And I think our, our idea of, of what we wanted our podcast to be was, you know, half on the product, update, development, feedback side of it. And then also we want to get guests from the golf world. And, and we've had a few mm. um, guys on. We had Adam Hadwin on, uh, PGA Tour player, Roger Sloan, who who just made a was about a 12-footer on the 72nd hole of the Corn Ferry Tour final event to get his card uh, for next year on the PGA Tour. We had him on last uh, a couple weeks ago. And just th- those kind of stories are also, you know, it's outside of the, the business world of of golf, but also super prevalent, um, you know, because so many people watch uh, professional golf. They, they aspire to play better. And these guys have some really great insights on what they're feeling when they're, you know, in the arena. Right. And, and you get some yeah. surprising answers sometimes. Uh, I'm, oh, yeah. I was always very honest about, I was proverbially uh, doing stuff in my pants a lot of the time while I was pay- playing PGA tour events. And I think it was Roger Sloan who, who said it was a five man playoff at the Wyndham, maybe a six man playoff, six man. Uh, yeah. A couple of years ago. And it was, you know, Adam Scott, Kevin Kisner, Kevin Na. The the list of players was impressive. And he said, man, I was so calm. I didn't know why, but I was so calm. Mm. And I'm thinking that's odd. It was odd to me because it was the biggest moment of his entire career, without a doubt. And all these players have all this pedigree and he's sitting there like, yeah, this is fun. And that's how you play your best, how you get there. Sure. Uh, oh, absolutely. Is, is a mystery, absolutely. right? And I think that's just an interesting part of, of golf, competitive sports, you know, and it's unique to golf because it's just you alone with your thoughts and you can't react in the moment like you can with hockey or baseball or football. That Those are all reaction sports, right? And, and golf is so different and so unique in that regard. And so it's fun to hear the guys like that talk about what they're yeah. feeling. Mm-hmm. I've always True. wanted to talk to to Steph Curry about his golf game. And it's like, you know, you're so um, – when you're on the basketball court and you do something big, you're like getting the crowd fired up and you get all, you know, cheerleader and you get in somebody's face and you're trash talking. You can't do that on the golf course. No. How is he able to make, you know – to to calm himself down, to get to a place in golf where he's able to play successfully and not do, how does, you know, if, if he did this stuff on the basketball court that he, if he would do that on, on the golf course, it would be a complete, people would not want to play. With Honestly, it. yes, it's probably have, why <laughs> baseball pitchers tend to be really good golfers. It's because they are alone by themselves and they have to think through their cadence of pitches, right? And and think about the batter that's in front of them. And obviously, they have coaches, and you know the catchers kind of tell yeah, them how to pitch. Yeah, but they only play every fifth day, too. True, that too. <laughs> <laughs> so they get to play golf during the day when everybody else. That's is out a on really the good fields. point, Fred. I didn't think about game. it that way. Yeah, yeah. that's why. Uh, yeah, I've always, I've always, especially like the middle the, reliever. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's the, he could be there every day. But that's that um, starting pitcher. That starting has pitchers. Best, yeah, yeah, best job in the world, right? Well, if you can get it, is, if and they, get they it, are. They, well. uh, most of the guy, like the the best guys in that, you know, um, the celebrity tournament out in in Reno mm-hmm. are uh, quite often, yeah, former starting pitchers. Oh yeah, right? John Smoltz. Oh, ta- the Tahoe one. Yeah, yeah. John yeah, Smoltz Tahoe, is great. Yeah. Mark Mulder played for the A's. You would right. know that. Fred. That's the one that Curry hit the, a hole in one this past. That's year. right. Yeah, what a moment right. that yeah. was. That was super cool. Yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. Anyway, um, well, it's great to talk to you guys. It was wonderful to have you back. And again, I really appreciate your continued support of Golf Smarter. Um, oh, before you go, Carrie, what podcasts are you listening to? What can you recommend? I, I go all over the place. Uh, I love yeah, I, so. uh, I, I love um, uh, Dax Shepard's uh, podcast. Uh, it's just w- sort of wide ranging. Um, um, I like uh, I like listening to Inc. Magazine. They they do a lot of different uh, like founder stories, um, 
and uh, I love yours. And then we have a couple of other um, partners, um, uh, Group Golf Therapy. They do a, a great podcast on sort of the mental side of golf and um, and then uh, another great partner with the Par Train. A um, couple of, of sort of uh, a sort of low handicap and a scratch golfer and sort of their journey. Um, so I, I like a wide range of stuff. I love audio, audio, audio books and, uh, mm, wow. and it, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of hard that, to do both. Uh, yeah, I, I try to find the time. I used to be a big reader and now I'm, yeah. I, you know, I don't audio read books. as much, but I like to kind of like walk and listen. So, uh, yeah. and, the, uh, um, yeah, audible used to be a sponsor of podcasts. You know, in the early days of podcasting, okay. they were big on it, and then they realized you either listen to podcasts or you listen to audiobooks. But it's hard to do both. Sure, to fit both of those into your life. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. If I can recommend a podcast I'm listening to right now, I'm just absolutely blown away by it. It's um, Soledad O'Brien from MSNBC and Rob Reiner oh, are doing wow. a weekly podcast called "Who Killed JFK." Ooh. It's so good. Oh, man. Um, and it's all about how Lee Harvey Oswald, there's no possible way. You know, they're calling it the greatest murder mystery of all time. There's no possible way that Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone. And then when you start <laughs> learning about that he was a CIA operative, you're like, oh, okay. Oh, oh that's, that's neat. Yeah. So that's my recommendation. Okay. Thank all you. right. Brad, are you, are you know podcast listener did you see it on my face fred is that what is that what happened <laughs> um I'll, I'll say this and, and I, when you left the room as, brad i kind of figured as, as like, carrie was uh talking there about what he likes i was going through my head why don't i listen to podcasts i've always been a fiction reader um mm. always been fascinated with spy novels government machinations stuff like that and i think it's because my career was so, I don't want to say out in front. It was just the day-to-day -day grind was, was so not tiring physically, but tiring mentally. And I just wanted to escape. And so mm. I was just a big fiction reader. Um, so I have not delved into podcasts, like not one single bit. I'm a, I was a frequent guest on a radio show here in Raleigh, North Carolina on a, um, sports radio show the two guys became good friends uh they got let go as what happens in the radio industry they immediately started a podcast i really hate the guy who replaced them at three o'clock and guess what i listened to in the car i listened to the guy at three o'clock because i can't figure out podcasting on my phone i can't figure it out and it's not hard i know but the the transition from i get a text i get a phone call it's interrupted i have to go back fred i can't do it uh, Brad, stick to golf that's it. and gloves. I'm just a golfer. I'm just a golfer. <laughs> Stay in your lane. <laughs> Stay in your lane. All right, guys. Well, again, thank you again for your support and for continuing to allow us to give away the, uh, the uh, Red Rooster glove and glove storage compartment to all of our Golf Smarter ambassadors who introduce an episode, as we heard at the beginning of this show. And continued, continued success and good luck. And I guess maybe in 2025, we'll talk about the companies that are trying to buy. Man, let's fast. Or that we're trying to buy. That's right. Let's fast forward to that year. That sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> we'll definitely come on for that one. As you may have noticed uh, from our newest Golf Smarter Ambassador, Stephen Anderson from Cincinnati, Ohio, at the beginning of the show, he recorded his episode opening at home and then emailed me the file. Could you hear the difference? Here's Steven again. This is Golf Smarter number 925. And now here's last week's ambassador, John Dovson of Waukee, Iowa, that he recorded on our toll-free listener line. This is Golf Smarter number 924. Not only is the quality radically different, at least in my ears, but I can understand now why Steven says that besides his obsession with golf, he also does voiceover work. In my email exchange with him, Stephen said that he goes to the Masters every year because of an amazing grandpa that was on the wait list for 30 years before he got tickets in the late 80s. He also claimed that he found golf smarter because he was sick of being okay at golf. Thank you, Stephen. And how's this for lucky timing? 
Stephen chose to receive a new glove and glove storage compartment from Brad and Carrie at RedRoosterGolf.com. After today's conversation, I hope that you too will sign up to become a Golf Smarter Ambassador by recording an upcoming show opening to receive a free gift of your choice that could include RedRoosterGolf.com, Tony Manzoni's video of The Lost Fundamental, or a box of Odin X1 balls with the Golf Smarter logo. Just write to me directly and I'll send you simple instructions on how to record an episode opening that takes less than a minute. Check out today's show notes to click on some links about each gift that you have to choose from. Now, over the next couple of weeks, as our holiday shopping list continues to grow, we're going to hear more from some of my favorite products we've come across here on Golf Smarter, including Dr. Daniel Whalen on his Flight Path Golf Tees, which some reviewers and websites are now claiming are the greatest golf tees ever invented. And for Christmas week, we'll hear from Sam Hahn of Lab Golf Putters on the impact that Adam Scott's and Lucas Glover's PGA Tour successes are having on the sale of Lab Golf Putters. Also, we'll get an important and exclusive announcement from Sam about their newest putter being released after the new year. To see and hear the most compelling and helpful short tips and insights of our podcast interviews for both Golf Smarter and Golf Smarter Mulligans, Please follow us on social at Golf Smarter on YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and X. For our ongoing posts of videos and articles that are now appearing five times each week. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions for upcoming episodes, or want to join our list of Golf Smarter ambassadors who've received a free gift, write to Golf Smarter Podcast at gmail.com or click on the Hey Fred button when you visit golfsmarter.com.